Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another hit film tutorial. This week we welcome back Mike Miller from Trium Visual. He's going to be showing you how to do this Sandman inspired disintegration effect. Today's tutorial is a very complex effect. We're going to be starting with multiple copies of green screen footage, generate some mats with black and white planes, apply those mats to the copies of the green screen footage, arrange multiple layers in 3D space, and set up multiple particle emitters using a layer emitter function in the particle sim, along with several forces and deflectors. I'm Mike Miller from Trium Visual and HitFilm University. Let's get started. Here we are in HitFilm Pro version 7. The particle techniques we're discussing today will work in any version of HitFilm Pro from 3 on. For this tutorial, we're going to work in 1080p and 23.976 frames per second. To start with this effect, you'll want to shoot your background plate as a separate video and shoot your actor on a green screen. Since there are several other tutorials on this channel dealing with green screening, we won't discuss that today. Instead, we'll just jump right into creating our back Javert layer. By shrinking down the 4K original to 1100 by 1000 pixels in this composite shot, we reduce the size of the layer emitter and reduce the drag on the system. I've created a composite shot, and inside this composite shot, I've already dragged in a copy of the keyed front Javert animation. We'll want to change the textures on this to give it a kind of a sandy look, so we'll go up to the Effects tab and first search for Bilateral Blur. Drag that to the 100 front Javert layer. Adjust the radius and threshold until most of the detail has been wiped out, leaving just a vague shape. Add a Curves effect. Use the Curves effect to lower the brightness in the midtones. Add a Tint effect. In the Tint effect, we'll just change the map white to, to an orange color, and turn the amount to tint down to about 35%. Add a Fractal Noise effect. In the Fractal Noise effect, open the Transform settings and change the scale to a much lower number, something around 5. Then, move up to the Seed parameter, Activate keyframing, skip to the last frame, and change the number to something higher. I'll use 5. Open the Appearance tab and change the Blend Mode from None to Soft Light. This gives us an orangey Javert with a sandy texture. Create a new comp shot. We'll call this 200 Matte Wipe. We'll want this to be 15 seconds long, 1100 pixels wide, 1000 pixels high, with a frame rate of 23.976 frames per second. Create a new black plane. And above that, create a new white plane, then drag the 100 front Javert comp shot to the very top. Change the opacity to 50% so we can see through him. Then go to the white plane and grab the masking tool. Draw a very rough outline around Javert, leaving a little bit of white. Move forward to the frame where you want the dissolve to start. Here it's going to be 9 seconds. Open the transform controls for the mask and activate keyframing for the property Path. Move forward a second or so and start adjusting the mask keyframe so that Javert is no longer covered by all the white. Then move forward to the last frame of the dissolve and move the mask keyframes so that no white is covering Javert. You may need to step back and forth a few times, refining the mask keyframes until the motion is how you like it. Create a grade layer, which we'll call Distortion Grade. Put this in between the 100 front Javert comp and the white plane. Find the energy distortion effect from the effects panel and drag that to the white plane. In the Energy Distortion controls, you'll want to adjust the distortion and scale until you get a nice jagged edge, and turn the diffusion bias and strength down to zero. In the Animation controls, set the wind's direction to 90, the wind speed to 25, and the noise speed to 0.25. Once this is done, you might have to adjust the mask points on the white plane again. We won't want to see any of the black eating into Javert until after we want our dissolve to start. Once you're happy with the animation of the mask, go ahead and turn off the 100 front Javert layer. Create a new composite shot. We'll name this 200 Edge Matte, make certain that it's 15 seconds long, 1100 pixels wide, 1000 pixels high, 23.976 pixels per second. Drag in a copy of the 200 Matte Wipe composite shot from the media panel. Press Ctrl D to make a duplicate of this layer, then move the playhead to the right by two frames. Drag the top copy of the Matte Wipe so that it begins two frames after the bottom copy. Move up to its layer controls, open the layer properties, and change its blend mode from normal to difference. This leaves us with a squiggly white line where both masks overlap. Create another composite shot. We'll name this 300 Front Javert Wipe. Into this composite shot, we'll drag in a copy of our 100 Front Javert composite shot and a copy of our 200 Matte Wipe. We can hide the 200 Matte Wipe. We don't need to see that. In the Effects panel, find the Set Matte effect and drag that to the 100 front Javert layer. In the Set Matte controls, set the Source layer to 200 Matte Wipe, set the Matte Source to Luminance, and set the Blend to Subtract. Then check the Invert box. And now Javert is wiped away by the Luminance values of the 200 Matte Wipe shot. Create another Composite shot. 
We'll name this 300 Front Javert Edge, drag in another copy of 100 Front Javert, and this time, drag in a copy of the 200 Edge Mat. And we'll do the exact same steps we did in the 300 Front Javert Wipe. We'll mute the 200 Edge Mat layer, drag in a Set Mat effect, set the Source layer to the Edge Mat layer, set the Mat Source to Luminance, the Blend to Subtract, and check the Invert box. This squiggly Edge Mat is what the Particle Simulator is going to use to determine where to spawn particles from. Move to the Media Panel, Select the front of Javert wipe composite shot and duplicate it. Rename the duplicate 300 back Javert wipe and open that up. Copy the set mat effect that exists on the Javert layer, then go ahead and delete the Javert layer. Drag in the 100 back Javert layer, then paste the set mat effect in. Move the playhead forward two frames, then drag the 200 mat wipe composite shot forward so that it starts on this second frame. Duplicate the 300 front Javert edge composite shot and rename that to 300 back Javert Edge Composite Shot. We're going to do the same steps we just did in the 300 front Javert Edge. We're going to delete the original Javert layer, drag in a copy of our back Javert Composite Shot, paste in the set mat effect, move the playhead forward by two frames, and then drag the 200 edge mat forward. With that done, we can select all four of our 300 layers and set them to proxy. Let's create another composite shot. We'll call this 400 Dissolve Composite, We'll want this to be 15 seconds long, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Drag in the 100 background layer, then drag in all four of our 300 level edge maps. Arrange these layers from top to bottom, front Javert edge, front Javert wipe, back Javert edge, and back Javert wipe. Convert all of these layers to 3D planes. Create a new point and call this Javert master point. Parent all four of the edge mat layers to the point. Type Position into the search bar at the top of the layer stack. Move Front Javert Edge forward 170 pixels. Move Front Javert Wipe forward 150 pixels. Move Back Javert Edge forward by 20 pixels and leave the 300 Back Javert Wipe at zero. Go to the Javert Master Point and change the scale to 105%. Then drag the point up on the Y axis. Next, we'll want to do a little bit of cleanup. We'll move the playhead to 9 seconds and 20 frames. Grab the razor tool and slice off the beginnings of the front Javert edge, back Javert edge, and back Javert wipe comps. Delete the layers that have the beginnings of these composite shots. Move the playhead to 9 seconds and 20 frames. Type opacity into the search bar for the layer panel and turn on opacity keyframes for the 300 front Javert edge, 300 back Javert edge, and 300 back Javert wipe. Set the opacity for these three layers to zero, then move forward three frames and set their opacities to 100%. I'm going to temporarily grab a hue colorize effect and drag that on the 300 front Javert edge and 300 back Javert edge. In the 300 back Javert edge, I'll open the hue colorize effect and change the hue rotation to 180. This just quickly shows you how the four layers interact. Near the end of the shot, we can see that the back layers are not reaching all the way to the bottom of the frame. So we'll go back up to the Javert master point and maybe change that scale from 105 to 110 and then move the Javert master point down on the Y axis. I'll just delete these two hue colorize effects. Create a new white plane. We want this to be 1920 by 1080 pixels. We'll drag this down the layer stack to just above the background layer and change it to 3D. Find the grid effect and drag that to the white plane. Open the transform properties for this plane, rotate it on the Y axis, then drag the plane into position so it more or less lines up with the back of the couch. We'll turn the grid effect off, open the layer properties, and change the blend from normal to multiply. Open the material settings and turn off the illuminated checkbox, but make certain that receives shadows is turned on. Go into the material settings for the 300 front Javert edge, front Javert wipe, back Javert edge, and back Javert wipe. Make certain that illuminated is unchecked for all four of these layers and that receive shadows and cast shadows are turned on. Create a 3D light. In the light controls, make sure that cast shadows is turned on. Change the shadow opacity from 50 to 40. Turn the shadow diffusion to 50. Grab the eyedropper for the shadow color and sample a color off the shadow on the back wall. In the transform properties for the light, we'll set an X value of negative 2000, a Y value of 1000, and a Z value of 2000. We're ready to start creating our particles. This is processor intensive, so I'm going to turn off the light layer, move up to the viewer options, and change playback and paused quality from final to draft, and change my playback and paused resolution from full to quarter. Move to the effects panel, find the particle simulator, and drag that into the layer stack. 
In the particle simulator's material settings, uncheck Illuminated and check Cast Shadows. Open up the emitter controls, change the shape from point to quad, position the emitter over Javert's eyes, and change the width and height until it covers Javert's face. We'll do our basic particle setup using this quad emitter before we link it to the layer emitters. Change the emitter trajectory from random to cone. Open the trajectory controls and change the Y rotation to 90. Change the radius to 85. And change the speed to 50. And change the movement variation to 10. Go to the life parameter and change the life to four seconds. Find the forces controls and click the plus icon to create a new force. The default force is a downward drag like gravity. So we'll just change the strength from 25 to 15 and rename the force gravity. Create a second force and name this turbulence. Change the type from direction to turbulence and we'll just leave the strength at 25%. We'll also want to create some deflectors. Find the deflector control and click the plus icon. Rename this first deflector couch. Change the shape from cuboid to layer. For the source layer, select the white plane. Check mask. This will add more depth to the effect as some particles will appear to fall behind the couch. Create another deflector. Name this kill bottom. Open up its general tab and set it to kill particles. For the shape, we'll leave it cuboid, but we'll change the width to 3000 pixels, the height to 20 pixels, and the depth to 3000 pixels. Then set the Y position to negative 700. Duplicate the kill bottom deflector and rename this kill right. Open up the shape controls and change the width to 20 pixels, change the height to 3000 pixels. In the position properties, change the Y value back to zero and change the X value to about 1100. We can see our particles are starting to fall off the bottom of the screen, but I'd like them to flow to the right. Come up to the search bar and type in acceleration. Change the X value to 750, leave the Y at zero, and change the Z to 200. Move the playhead forward to 9 seconds and 20 frames, and slide the particle emitter forward so that's the first frame it appears on. Type active into the search bar for the layer stack, and activate keyframing for the emitter general active property. Move the playhead forward to 12 seconds, and click the active checkbox off. Move to the particle controls, and rename this emitter front, and in the shape controls, change it from a quad to layer. Select Front Javert Edge as the source layer and check Use Layer Color and Use Layer Alpha. The particles are now emitting directly from the edge layer and taking the color and transparency from that layer. But these particles are way too big and there aren't nearly enough of them. Move the playhead to 9 seconds and 20 frames and turn the particle simulator layer off. In the search bar of the layer panel, type in particles per second. Activate keyframing and change this value to 30,000. Without moving the playhead, grab this keyframe and slide it forward to 10 seconds and 10 frames. Now with the playhead still at 920, change particles per second from 30,000 to 1,000. Using the search bar in the layer controls, type in scale and change this from 100 to 12. Open movement variation and set that to three. Move back to the controls in the particle layer, find the front emitter, duplicate it. Name this duplicate back. Open the back emitter and change its shape from 300 front Javert edge to 300 back Javert edge. Open the trajectory controls and change the Y rotation from 90 to negative 90. Type speed into the search bar and we'll change the speed from 50 to 100. Then type acceleration, change the X acceleration value from 750 to 850 and change the Z from 200 to negative 200. Type seed and change the seeds of both emitters. Finally, come to the particle sim layer and change it from 2D to 3D unrolled and turn on motion blur. Come to the settings cog for the composite shot, open the advanced tab, and in the motion blur settings, change the shutter angle from 180 to 360. Change the shutter phase from zero to negative 180. Then turn on the point light. And that's it. This is ready to render. There are a lot of steps, but this isn't really that hard to set up. And once you get this down, it's pretty easy to change the particle emitter to get all kinds of different looks. That's it for today. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for weekly filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for more content, and I'll see you all in the next video.